All right. Okay, so welcome to our virtual orientation today. So I'm Chris Jones. I'm the coordinator of the honors program. And it's my, my pleasure to, um, first of all, for those of you that are brand new to the honors program, welcome you to the honors program. Um, and also to be able to relay some information about the honors program and answer any questions that you all might have. I'm joined by two people today that are going to help me to facilitate this meeting. So one of which is our Honor Student Council President, um, at least for another month and a half, uh, Mr. George Strawbridge. So, TJ, go ahead and give a, a wave. There you go. <laughs> All right. Um, and then also by our Dean of the Honors Program, Dr. Tony Wollers. All right. Um, and essentially today, what we're going to do is essentially go through and talk about the mission and value of the honors program, um, what sort of courses there are in the honors program if you want to take our honors courses, um, and then also talk about the benefits and opportunities that um, are there for you, um, both at Harford as well as um, beyond Harford. Um, and then finally, we're gonna go through and talk about some of the requirements um, that um, if for some reason you wanna know what it takes to stay in the honors program and then get out of the honors program, we'll talk about that as well. All right. And then obviously the most important part is to be able to answer your questions. All right. um, and I did just get something in the chat that somebody's having a little bit of difficulty getting cut off. Um, is anybody else experiencing that? Okay. All right, so um, suggestion might be if you have your video on, maybe don't turn it on. Or um, when, when I do post the video, um, anything that might've gotten cut out, um, that'll be able to, you can manifest that part as well. All right, so the first thing we want to do is get to know who you are, all right, because without the, any honor students, there's no honors program. So um, just randomly, if you guys could tell me your name, um, what your major is, and um, what you're hoping to get out of this session. So whoever wants to start, you can. Hi, my name is Piper, um, Piper Tasoulis. My major, I'm majoring in psychology. Um, and I guess kind of just trying to get an idea of what it means to be in the honors society, um, you know, what that looks like and if there's any way it can be more involved um, and, um, you know, super excited to be here. Didn't think I'd ever be an honor student. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, very welcome. Uh, thank you for having us, Piper. All right. Hi, um, this is going to be for Connor. Connor's going to introduce himself. Hi, everybody. I'm Connor Okuda. Um, I major in mass communications. And uh, I, I obviously know what it takes to be on um, an honor student. So because I was an honor student uh, in high school, so it, it means a lot. And I hope I can continue the success from high school. Great, Connor. And Welcome to the honors program and thanks for joining us today. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm Morgan Babb. I'm an engineering major and I'm here to figure out the unknown unknowns. I don't know what I don't know. So I want to make sure I can get that covered. Okay. I, I say I say that all the time. I, I don't know what I don't know. So that's that's a great quote, I think. So great, great to have you, Morgan. Thanks for joining us. Um, my name's Helen Cooper. Um, I'm actually doing prerequisites for physical therapy school. Um, so I'm doing a lot of the sciences. Um, and it's my first time being in honors. Great. Welcome, um, Helen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Azaria Bruton. And this will be, oh, well, I guess my major kind of be like nursing prep nursing. And I don't know, I just kind of wanted to do the Honor Society, you know, because because of high school, too. So I just wanted to kind of challenge myself with the workload to see if I could do it. Awesome. Uh, my name is Max Richards. I'm an education major. I was just looking for some general information. I, I also write, I didn't know what I don't know. So I was just going to find out what was there. Awesome. Thanks for joining us today, Max. Anybody else want to introduce themselves? Um, I'm Gina. I'm majoring in uh, arts and graphic design, and I'm pretty much here just to learn more about the program and see how I can challenge myself. 
Awesome. Welcome, Gina. All right. I think we got everybody. Did I miss anybody? Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Alexis is working. It's okay. Um, we have Alexis Sturgill, and she's a general studies major hoping to get into the sonography program. Um, and she's wants to learn a little bit more about the honors program, and she's excited to be a part of it. So thanks, Alexis. So I, I always forget in a virtual environment that most times most of us are not just multitasking, but multi-multitasking. So we have things that we're doing on the side, we're listening to things, but then we also have things that distract us from the things we're doing. So lots of things going on. I don't know how many times I can say the word things in the same sentence, but I think I might have set a record for it. Um, and one of the things that's truly awesome about the honors program is that, as you've heard, we've got majors in science, we've got majors in arts, we've got majors in education. The beautiful thing about honors is, is that we've got students in every discipline. There's so much diversity and there's so much to learn from one another. And, and that really is one of the most incredible hallmarks about the honors program is that you always have somebody in a field that's an honors student that if you need some help with something, you can turn to them. And I think collectively, that, that's certainly one of the most important hallmarks about learning is being able to not only just learn from your teachers, but learn from other people. So joining the honors program, you're gonna have access to peers of high caliber that you can kind of lean on and ask them questions. And of course, be expected that they might ask you questions as well that are in your discipline. And I just wanna talk a little bit about what the honors program is. And, and um, after I'm done, Tony and, and TJ, if you wanna just chime in anything, please feel free to do so as I'm doing this. But um, really without the students, there is no honors program. And so at really the crux of the honors program are the students. And when we say students, we mean, what do you want the honors program to be? What courses do you want us to offer? What sorts of extracurricular opportunities? What sorts of leadership um, sorts of engagements do you want? Those are the types of things that we're trying to gear the honors program towards. It's unlike a lot of disciplines at Harford where, um, and, and I'm not gonna pick on anything, I'll pick on math because nobody likes math, except if you're an engineer like Morgan, so I'm sorry. But, um, but, with math, we have a set curriculum. You take your math courses and that's that, and you really don't have much say in it. Um, but with the honors program, it's more flexible contingent upon what the students want the honors program to be. And so if there's courses that you feel that we should offer, let us know. And if we have enough interest and we can find a qualified instructor for that, we'll absolutely be happy to try to offer something like that. Um, and so that's probably the main way that you're going to interact with your, your peers is through the honors courses. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about what makes an honors course versus what doesn't make an honors course. And then you'll get the, um, the reel from TJ, who's taken three honors courses. So he'll let you know what's, what it's really about from the student perspective. But there's also opportunities outside of the classroom. Um, global engagement, meaning what sorts of opportunities do we have to, to learn about the world at large, about different cultures, to engage with, um, to learn about different things outside of our own realm. And that's what we mean by global engagement. And that's part of the honors program as well. We offer opportunities for service learning. So we do have um, community service opportunities and we had a lot more when before COVID but this darn pandemic uh, kind of limits what we can do outside of our own homes. But we will try to offer you some sort of um, community service opportunities. Um, and uh, as I'll talk a little bit later, there are a number of leadership and scholarship opportunities. So um, TJ and Tony, if I missed anything, please feel free to chime in with whatever. Chris, I think you captured it. Um, I mean, you will talk more about the um but talk more about the uh, the research opportunities. Um, one thing to always keep in mind in general, you know, uh, make sure to take advantage of all the uh, opportunities that are offered through the honors program. There's so much um, in these areas, in each of those areas, you know, global engagement, uh, there will be several opportunities, certainly service learning. Uh, 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 there are more, more uh, opportunities that will come up and leadership, Chris will talk about um, some of the committees um, uh, where students have been involved. Uh, that's always a great uh, opportunity as well. It's really there, you know, to not just make you successful here at Harvard, uh, but to really uh, make sure you're successful 
uh, as you move on to, to a four-year institution, to graduate school maybe, or um, as you're thinking about um, your, your professional career, all those skills and experiences you uh, get from the honors programs, um, those are lifelong experiences uh, and skills, so take advantage. Thanks, Terry. Thank you, Chris. Sure. TJ, did you want to add anything? You guys covered it pretty well, yeah, as far as this goes, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Terry. appreciate it. All right. Yeah. He's not, he's not the president of the Honor Student Council for nothing. <laughs> All right. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what an honors course is versus a non-honors course, because a lot of you are either in honors courses or going to be on honors courses. And it's like, what am I getting myself into? What's the difference between a general course and an honors course? Um, so some of the physical or the logistical characteristics is that the honors courses are smaller in size. Um, generally, we have classes that top out around 25 or 30, depending upon what class you're in. And it's really hard to kind of get access to the teacher all the time. It's really hard to work in groups because there might be so many groups. With the honors courses, we tend to limit those to 15 students. Occasionally, there'll be a class that might have like 20 in it or something like that because there's a high demand for it. But we really do try to keep those classes small. And the courses are generally taught by our veteran faculty members, the one that both have teaching experience as well as industrial experience as well. So we try to utilize their, we leverage their skills because we wanna to try to teach a higher synthesis of learning within those courses, meaning that you'll get a deeper understanding of concepts. Embedded in all of our courses too are elements of research. And no matter what four-year school or what, um, what uh, I guess graduate school you end up going to, if you're deciding to go there, you're gonna to have to do some research at some level. And so it's a really good opportunity for everybody to kind of get in, to kind of get their feet wet with what is undergraduate research. And it's one of the hallmarks of our honors program. In fact, this year, we were really heavily focused on making sure that our students had lots of opportunities to learn about research and to engage in research, both at the local level as well as the state level. Almost all of our courses are general education courses. So it doesn't matter if you're a psychology major, it doesn't matter if you're an engineer. We have courses that will fit both your academic, um, I'm sorry, your program requirements, as well as the honors requirements. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about more which specific courses there are as well. Um, and of course, if you complete an honors course, it goes on your transcript as an honors course. Now. That's all nice and well said. Sounds like I've rehearsed that a few times, but um, what do the students have to say about it? So TJ, I'm gonna lean on you um, and, and if you can relay what really goes on in an honors class from a student's perspective, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, so one of my favorite things about the honors courses uh, was the smaller class size that Chris was talking about because, you know, obviously that's better just, you know, on a surface level, you're going to get, you know, a little bit more attention, uh, like direct uh, attention from the teacher, and you might be able to develop those relationships with your classmates. But I, I think one of the best results of the smaller class sizes is that it turns into a, a discussion format instead of like a, like a class or just lecture format. It, you know, the classes become, you know, kind of like intellectual discussions about the subject matter. And I really enjoyed that uh, in all of my honors classes. But also uh, the research, like the, the really uh, intense focus on research-based curriculum in these classes uh, leads us to have uh, like more specialized understandings of specific topics within the course. And we go a lot deeper than I'd say in, in, uh, in regular, than in regular courses on the subject matter. For instance, like in my art history class, my honors art history class that I took a couple of semesters ago, we, instead of like just touching lightly on like a bunch of different things, we uh, went really deep into a few things. It was a select, uh, you know, just a select look at what a period of time and the different movements that were in it, but we went really deep into those 
within that select period of time. And then for the research project that was part of this course, uh, we all got to focus really deeply on like, we had to pick a really select topic because, you know, research is specific and that's what we, so that's something we kept in mind for this is, uh, so I, you know, me personally, I focused on one very small movement within one artist's, you know, really long and expensive career. But uh, yeah, that's like, those are the two main things, but, I, but I'd also like to note that the, you know, when, when you guys think about honors classes, I, I don't know if Chris mentioned this, I, I didn't hear him say this yet, but, uh, you know, you, you generally would expect them to be a lot harder than normal classes, but they're actually just different. You know, I, I would say that, you know, the, the workload isn't something that's unmanageable. It's just different. And I think it's, it's valuable, the, the different the different values that it kind of focuses on and especially the research component really helps you uh, overall just again it helps you understand the content on, on a deeper level and it's not necessarily harder and it's not necessarily more work it's just a different experience and that's part of what makes it really nice so yeah that's all i've got for now thanks tj and just as a specific example of how curriculum is different um, whenever I teach my honor statistics course, I don't have a final examination in the course, where if I teach a general statistics course, we do. And in lieu of that final exam, there's a research project as well as presentation of that research. So um, not only are you getting the, the math and statistical skills, but you're also getting research skills as well as presentation skills. So um, it's not more work. It's just learning different skills that um that are not only going to help you in the course but also throughout your life um, being a good presenter is an enviable skill being able to collaborate with other people is an enviable skill for employers to have and those are the sorts of things that we're trying to um in, we're trying to relay within our honors courses as well as the honors program um tony did you want to add anything else or everything cool so far with you you're the boss you tell me Oh, no, no, I'm not the boss. <laughs> just just a collaborator, facilitator. Um, no, I think everything has been covered. Um, you know, um, again, um, maybe the only thing I want to add is um, if you guys look at the, um, the image there, and I'm sorry, I, as you said, multitasking, there are several other things going on right now here. Um, but that image that you see here, uh, kind of shows, uh, gives you a little bit of an idea, you know, how that undergraduate research is kind of working in, in practice. Um, so here you have a few students um, representing, presenting their research project and um, it's low pressure. Uh, you see, uh, you know, there are a bunch of students here presenting and they're surrounded by others uh, who are asking questions. Uh, so it's just a great opportunity to kind of learn that skill, uh, presentation skills. That's something you can carry on with um, or take on, um, uh, used for the, the rest of your, uh, you know, academic and professional uh, life. So another opportunity to definitely take care, uh, take advantage of, and it's systematically built into um, the uh, honors program. Thanks, Tony. Appreciate it. Um, for those of you guys that haven't looked at the rotation of honors courses, these are the courses that we traditionally offer each semester. I'd encourage you to try to take um, at least one honors course each semester when possible, fall and spring. Um, and as I'll talk about a little bit later, to complete the honors program, you have to have three honors courses. So one per semester is um, a pretty good benchmark for you. Um, and be careful when you're selecting your courses not to um, not to take courses um, like all your gen ed courses and then you don't have anything left and you might not be able to complete the honors program. One of the things I always encourage students to do is to meet with me um, if possible so that we can plan out a pathway. So for instance, I might be able to help you look at your, um, your degree works with you and say, well, if you're a business major, maybe you could take BA 101 in this fall. And then in winter, you can take leadership. And then in the spring, you can take an econ class. Or, and that's just one example. There's a, there's a slew of other permutations that we could come up with. But, um, but my goal is to try to help you 
to make sure you, you satisfy both your degree as well as your honors requirements. And, and that should be your goal too, if you're planning classes, is to just make sure you're getting those classes in. You don't have to complete the honors program. If you don't complete it, there's no detriment or anything like that, but um, it's always nice to have one more merit on your academic transcript as opposed to not. Um, just some of the benefits of being in the honors program. There's certainly recognition. So for those of you that are graduating, I think TJ's graduating, he'll be able to get a medallion um, from the honors program. And then also you have uh, honors courses that are designated as honors on your transcript. So if you're applying to a competitive university or program, they can see that you took honors courses. When you complete the honors program, that's also designated on your transcript. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, we had a number of events, but unfortunately, we haven't been able to engage in as many events, but we did some field trips before. In fact, every semester we did a, um, a field trip. And these are just some of the field trips that we had before. Um, we've had several other ones that we haven't listed here, but I was running out of room. So I, I just posted some of the more recent ones that we've looked at. We've also done resume and writing seminars before where I invited members of our financial aid team to talk about what, it, what they look for in an excellent um, scholarship letter. So if you're writing a, for a highly competitive scholarship, um, be on the lookout for those things in the fall and the spring of next year. So that way you can kind of learn from the people that rate these scholarships, um, what's, what they look for in a good scholarship letter. And we've also done other sorts of events that aren't necessarily heavy on academics, but also just on team building. So for instance, um, we've had scavenger hunts before. I think recently we just had one, right, TJ? Um, which was the... Escape room. Yeah, we had an escape room. Yeah, virtual, and it was really fun, actually. Yeah, yeah. we we escaped. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> um, we've gone to the physical escape rooms before. Um, we are having a quiz bowl. We had one last semester. We're going to have another one this semester on May 11th, um, and I'll I'll send out a little bit more information about that very soon. We've done adopt the roads before, where we literally go on the side of the road and clean up trash for a morning. Um, and then anybody that participates in an honors event, you're eligible to get an honors t-shirt. Um, so just um, what I'll send out some stuff and let you guys know. So um, thanks for joining us, Dr. Tony. Take care of yourself. All right. Um, just some other benefits that are really awesome for you guys to try to engage in. Um, we do have an honors completion ceremony. So that recognizes students at a separate, um, smaller ceremony for people that complete the honors program. We usually do that sometime in late May, right before graduation. And we also hold something called an Honor Scholar Summit where students present their research and they compete for prizes. Um, I think we have three $100 prizes for people that rate the best in three different categories. So best overall STEM or behavioral social science research. We have a creative um, type, and then we also have a poster presentation. So, um, so if you've done research in a course, Next year, if, you're, if you haven't submitted something, please consider submitting um, something for the Honor Scholar Summit. And I'll send a little bit more information out about the Honor Scholar Summit. I believe the date for that is gonna be May 25th. Um, so if you wanna kind of get an idea of what's going on in honors class research-wise, you can join in and, and view what's been done. Um, if you're interested in building up your resume for leadership, so if you're applying to a competitive institution and they're looking for leadership as well as academics, we have a slew of opportunities. Um, we have an honor student council and TJ's the president and I'm gonna let him talk a little bit about it in a moment. Um, but we also have um, representatives on both local and statewide uh, work groups. So for instance, there's something called a Maryland Collegiate Honors Council and we usually have a student or two that serves on that board that helps with the planning of that. Uh, we have a faculty honors advisory board and we always have a student representative on that as well. Um, and that, and we're going to advertise that position. I believe I'm gonna send out um, tomorrow um, all the open positions for the honors student council. So if you're interested in working with the honors board, that's an opportunity for you. We have a representative on the distance learning committee on campus. Um, TJ and another student were research, uh, were representatives uh, of the Honors Research Scholarship Committee. And then we usually have um, an advocate or a student or two that joins for Student Advocacy Day. Um, they used to just go to Capitol Hill. Now I believe it's virtual. Um, and the last two years, it, we've been fortunate enough to have students that from the honors program that were selected to be the speakers at commencement. Um, so 
there's a lot of opportunities for you to engage in leadership um, sorts of um, um, sorts of initiatives if you're interested in that sort of thing. Um, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later. If you don't want to engage in anything, you don't have to either. There's no minimum number of um, external or extracurricular sorts of activities that you have to engage in. So, so just be aware that you know we, we know honor students are busy. We know that you already have a lot on your plate. So if you can't join us for any of these, that's perfectly fine. We completely understand. All right, so I'm gonna sit back and let TJ talk for a few moments about the Honor Student Council, about what their mission and values are um, and how you can be involved with the Honor Student Council. So TJ, take it away, sir. Yeah, I mean, in short, our mission basically is to help make the Honors Program as good as it can be for you guys and for everybody in the Honors Program. But uh, what, what we do is we, well, one of the things we do is we plan all the events that we do that Chris was just talking about, like the trip to New York City, the escape room, stuff like that, uh, service learning opportunities like the adopt -a road And, uh, you know, we, we plan all of those out. We send them all out. We execute them. We execute them. We, uh, we also facilitate the new course offerings. So, like, if you guys want a new course to be offered uh, with the honors designation. You guys just come to us and talk with us at one of the meetings. We typically meet every two weeks, uh, and and you, you know, we work something out where we can try and get that to be offered. Uh, usually, what students would do in that case is they uh, go and they'll get a small petition together. Six, uh, seven people is usually the uh, you know the lucky number for that. Seven other you know peers who would like that course, and then they get it. We we find a teacher or you guys can suggest a teacher who would be willing to do that. And we try and work it out with you guys so that you guys can have the, uh, like the honors experience that you want. Cause that's like one, one of our other missions is to really like help you guys craft the honors experience and the honors program that you guys want, because that's, that's the whole point. But uh, also what we do is we, collaborate with a lot of other on-campus organizations and uh, professors from different fields uh, in, you know, a wide variety of committees that come up. Like when there, when there's some particular goal that uh, the college has or other people have uh, on campus, we typically are called in to, you know, help, you know, work, work on that and develop something, you know, through initiatives and through uh, committees. And since we're, we're kind of like, the the face of like honors leadership you know student honors leadership at at hcc then you know we we're the like some of the first ones that are called in to do that stuff uh so for instance chris was talking about how i was on the uh scholars summit planning committee i mean that was uh that was within the honors program but you know it, it's committees like that where we kind of work with a wide variety of like professors and we try and make things happen. And that, that's part of the overall uh, leadership experience you're gonna get from the Honor Student Council. If you, now that, you know, if you want to actually take up a position and there's actually gonna be a, a bunch of positions opening up soon because there's a lot of uh, members or executive board members that are graduating this semester. So there's gonna be a lot of openings and you guys will have a chance to get involved directly in the planning and leadership uh, of the honors program and I, I i really highly recommend it because not only does it give you leadership experience it's going to help you grow as a person and you know just give you that skill but it's also going to look really good uh for transfer scholarships transfer institutions and internships i know a lot of people on the uh, honor student council who have obtained internships and i know for a fact that it's you know, there, there's a large part of that that comes from the leadership experience they gained from being in the Honor Student Council uh, that, that allowed them to get that, those internships. And uh, yeah, I, th I think it helps out a lot. So I, I would highly recommend it. But even if you don't want to commit to a position or anything, I, I would recommend coming to the meetings. I would you know, if, or, or definitely just remembering what I said about the whole, if you, if you want to add a new course, then you should totally try and pursue that and get some peers interested and find a teacher that would be willing to do that because that's that's another form of leadership or anything really if, if you have a policy suggestion if you have an initiative you want to start on campus 
can come, you can get our backing, you can, you know, just collaborate with us really. And you can, you can find ways to work with the Honor Student Council or join the Honor Student Council that will give you really valuable leadership experience. But uh, yeah, that's all I've got for now. So Chris. Cool, thanks TJ, that was perfect. Yep, awesome. And just a few pictures of some of the events that we, we were able to do prior to the pandemic. So um, these two that are in the upper middle, as well as the upper right, this is when we went to New York a couple of times. Uh, we went to Great Escapes, and I keep forgetting that I have a flamingo on my head in this one. Um, the one below that was at the Maryland Collegiate Honors Council a couple of years ago. Uh, or the, I'm sorry, the Maryland Collegiate Honors Conference a couple of years ago. And then we have um, where we went through and we did an adopt the road. So lots of opportunities for you to engage. Um, we didn't pay anybody to smile in the pictures. Everybody's genuinely happy. So um, it's really cool to just connect with other people, I think, too, and just, um, you know, get out of the academic classroom and just bond with your, your peers. Um, really quickly, I just want to talk about some of the scholarships, the monetary scholarships that are available for you all. Um, one thing that you might have heard, but if you haven't, I just want to make this apparently clear that um, if you earn an A or a B in an honors course and you're an honors student, good standing, will pay the tuition for your next honors course. Um, it'll be in-county tuition. So let's say this semester or this upcoming fall, you take um, psychology 101 honors, you get an A in that class, and then in the spring, you wanna take sociology as honors. We'll pay for that honor sociology class, we'll pay the tuition for it. And we'll do that for two classes. And I talked a little bit about the honors scholar summit. There's a hundred dollar cash award for students that are, um, what rated one of the best in the three categories um, for that for your research. So, so those are opportunities while you're at Harvard. Now, if you're planning to transfer to an honors program um, at a university, there's a number of opportunities as well. So at Towson, $1,250 if you transfer to them. And I think you have to have a 3.5 GPA and complete all the requirements at Harvard for our honors program. Goucher will give you 8,000. Um, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, 4,000. And then if you're a Phi Theta Kappa member, an additional 2,500 on top of that. University of Baltimore, $2,000. And then um, last month, we were able to secure an articulation with Salisbury. Um, and they've got two opportunities for students to join their honors college and get a $1,000 honors uh, annual scholarship. Um, and then there are some places that we have articulations where they don't offer money, but they offer you automatic admission to their honors program. So Sweetbriar College, University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Um, we are drafting our articulation with Frostburg and we're hoping to have that done by the end of the semester. But if not, um, hopefully we'll have that by the beginning of the fall semester for everybody. So um, lots of transfer opportunities um, for you if you're planning to transfer to another institution. Um, and there's also probably money at other colleges um, that might not be necessarily honors, but you could certainly um, apply for a scholarship. And because you've completed the honors program or taken honors courses, it's certainly a feather in your cap per se. So, um, so think about those things when you're applying to other universities um, about the monetary benefits as well as the academic benefits of the honors program. Um, if you're here, you're in the honors program, so you've already been admitted, so you don't even have to worry about the first bullet point. Um, to maintain um, your status in the honors program, you have to have a 3.2 or better GPA in honors courses as well as overall. If you drop below that, we give you a one semester grace period. So let's say, for instance, your first semester, you get a B in an honors course and you get a B in all your courses. That doesn't mean we're going to keep you out of the honors program. We just work with you so that way you can get above a 3.2. And as I noted before, um, we know that you're very busy. Sometimes you can engage in events, other times you can't. So participation in all our events is completely optional, but we certainly encourage and we wanna hear your voice um, and make sure that you are represented at our events. And then finally, to complete the honors program, um, you have to have three honors courses, a 3.2 GPA in those three honors courses um, and a 3.20 overall GPA. And then you have to complete your degree. All right. So um, if you ever have any questions about um, any of the requirements or the pathways or anything like that, please feel free to email me. Okay, we can set up an appointment. Usually it takes us about 10, 15 minutes to go through um, to try to, and a lot of times it's like individual sorts of cases. And some of you I've already met with um, and some of you I'm going to meet with already. So, um, so certainly please reach out to me. I'm happy to help you out. 
All right. So that's about all I have and TJ has, I believe, unless TJ, you have something else that you, okay, cool. So I'm going to turn it over to the audience. We have about 10 minutes left for any of your questions. Okay, you only if so, you want to, otherwise I'll email it. Um, so if you have any questions, um, what if you want to, or if you want to put it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, and it might be you don't know what you don't know already. So um, as you go along, you might have questions as we go along through the honors program. And I do encourage you guys to reach out to me if you do have those questions. So, okay. The raise hand. All right. So um, anything else, TJ, do you want to say anything else before we depart for the afternoon? Uh, thank you guys for coming. You know, I, you know uh, good luck and everything, I, you know. Looking forward to maybe working with you guys for the last month and a half. I'm going to be here. Uh, oh, I, I, there might be a question. Yeah, Morgan, go ahead. Yeah. Morgan, did you have a question or did you just accidentally raise your hand? I'm sorry. I uh, muted my mic on hardware. And so I oh, that's okay. To, why aren't they hearing me? Um, yeah, so uh, are honors uh, classes offered over the summer and or, or winter? Boy, you are like literally the fifth person to ask me that in the last two days. It's a great question. Um, we generally don't offer honors courses in the summer because historically, um, when we tried to offer them, they did not fill. However, if I've gotten five um, requests or five inquiries in the past two days, and I'm not good with numbers, but that would suggest to me that there may be a demand for such. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to send out a survey and I'm going to ask folks, if we were to offer a course, what type of course would you like? And I know it's a difficult sort of thing because most of you, when you take a summer class, you might be looking for a specialized class or something like that. So. Um, when we do survey, we're going to have to go with the majority, unfortunately, on it, um, just because we want to make sure that we do have sufficient enrollment. So um, now over the summer, we have offered um, independent sort of studies. So I'll give you an example. Um, last summer, we were able to offer a section of our leadership class where we had like one or two students in it so they could complete their honors requirements. And then we did offer a couple of students the earth science class. So um, there may be opportunities, even if we don't get like a consensus for you to be able to take classes. Um, so if you do want a class and you feel strongly about it, either shoot me an email or just schedule like a couple minutes with me so that way we can talk about what might be um, an option. So, um, but more, we don't have anything on the books as of right now. Um, hopefully we're going to get something very soon. And if it were to be offered, it'd probably be offered in this in probably like um, mid-June or even in July or something like that to give people an opportunity to register. Okay. Cool. Good question. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Does anybody else have any other questions that I can answer? Nothing. I'm going to shoot you an email because I have a couple of questions. Great. Thanks, Helen. No problem. Okay. All right, folks, anything else? All right. So um, contact information. Um, if you want to get a hold of one of us, there's um, TJ's, hey, George. Uh, I'll have to ask you one day how it became TJ out of George. But uh, regardless, um, there's TJ's um, email address. If you want to email him, he's the president of the Honor Student Council. Um, a question from Linda. Um, do you offer internships to radio stations? Um, as far as I know, I have not heard of any of our students acquiring any radio station scholarships, um, in fact, or internships, I'm sorry. Um, I do know that at our radio station for WHFC, I think there might be positions, I, I, and I know that there are student positions. I don't know if they're available. Um, if you want, if you could shoot me an email, I can put you in contact. Uh, I don't know if Gary is still the, um, the person, the point of contact but I do know the faculty member that's the point of contact for the radio station, at least at Hartford. Outside of Hartford, I'm not too sure, but at least we can put some feelers out. So um, we'll see what we can do. Let's, let's go with that. 
Okay, but just shoot also, me. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh my bad. I thought you were done. Oh yeah, I was just gonna add something more to that. And like you know, also if if you get involved with like the leadership in the honors program, like honor student council, or you know, uh, somehow you can kind of leverage that experience uh, on a resume or something, you know, some sort to try and get an internship with a radio station, even if it's not connected to HCC. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind for sure. Thanks for answering my question. And this is Connor. I'm oh, just using thanks, my Connor. Yeah, sure. using my mom's computer. Sorry about that. Thanks, Connor. You're welcome. There was another question in the chat from Alexis. Um, will we be will we get emails about honors events? Yes. Um, what I try to do is I try to send out the emails a couple weeks in advance, just letting you know what's going to go on um, for um, the, the next couple weeks or so. Um, I try to do that on Fridays, actually, just because that's my lighter day to where I don't have to teach any classes and I generally get fewer um, student inquiries, etc. So I do have a fairly long email that I'm going to send out tomorrow. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and do try to check your Harford email once a week. Um, I try to send out an email at least every other week or something like that, notifying you as to what events are going to uh, be upcoming. But it, just a really quick snapshot. Um, our next two events um, are going to be on May 11th. Um, and that's going to be where we ha have our quiz bowl. And then we have a quick meeting right before that with the Honor Student Council. Um, and then also on the 25th, that's going to be our Honor Scholar Summit. So um, again, I'm going to send out an email with, with the information and the login stuff like that. Okay, so thanks, Alexis. Great question. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any other questions? Okay, everybody. Well, thanks again for joining us and hang in there. Only three more weeks till the end of the semester. Not that I'm counting. Um, and I hope to see you guys um, either in some meetings or in my classes, et cetera, um, and, and keep doing some great work. Um, one of my favorite positions at Harvard is working with the honor students. It really has been a blessing to work with so many different talented students. Um, so, so please keep up the great work and I do hope to see you all soon. So thanks again for joining and, and take care everybody. Good day. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Have a nice day. Thank Bye. you. Bye.